Greetings, this is Tyrola Femi, your goddess guru, here to share a word of wisdom with you on your path to self-realization, knowing the fullness of who and what you are, and self-mastery, mastering your gifts, your talents, your lessons, so that you can live a life that where you feel successful, um, a life where you feel happy. Um, and so what I want to talk about in this video is inspired by someone who I spoke with recently who said, you know, I'm watching some of you mm, grow beyond maybe perhaps the spiritual system you were raised up in, uh, in a way where you don't seem to be nervous and concerned. You, you seem to be comfortable right where you are. Um, how do you do that? And so this is a very um, touching topic for me because I'm one of the ones who has been able to make the transition though it hasn't been without lots of nervousness and fear um, and so it's almost like there's no magic elixir that anyone can give you there's no magic formula that anyone can give you when your spirit calls you to something that's different from what you're used to, that's different from what the people around you um, tend to do, um, it, 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 it's either you're going to answer the call or you're not. It's, it, it's, that's how I look at it, you know. It's a call. And you know and I know it's a call. If you're watching this video because you're trying to understand your loved one, it's a calling. It's like something that you're interested in. So let's talk about animals. Some people are just called to really love animals. Let's be specific. Some people really love dogs. And it's not even really anything that's developed in them. It is, it is just... It's who and what they are. Um, and they're going to always have a dog or two or three or four or nine um, in their home. And they are going to love talking about dogs. And they may even be called to help other people learn how to be um, better caretakers for dogs. Um, they will have posters of dogs. They'll watch documentaries on dogs. They may go into doing things that people who have dogs do. Like, I don't know what those things are. I have a dog, but I'm new. And that dogs are not a calling for me. Uh, even though I have grown to love my dog. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know all of what people do. The, think about people who love to fish. That's another one. People who love to fish, it's just in them. Okay? It's, it's a calling. Either you love it or you don't. I don't know anyone who's like, ah, I like to fish sometimes, but sometimes not. You know, most people are like, I have got to go and fish. I just love being out there fishing. Oh, my gosh. And some people become anglers, and there's associations you're going to join to get deeper into fishing. My husband loves to camp. Oh, man. He's, he's like an outdoorsman. He loves to hike. This dude just loves the outdoors and outdoor living type of things, you know. It's who and what they are. It's a calling. And I'm not talking about people who are conditioned, like you're born into a family and this is what people do. No, I'm saying, like my husband was, he, he was opposed to camping at one point. And he went on that first camping trip and it just completely just changed his life. He's, just, he's been camping ever since. Um, and he wasn't raised up camping. Okay, So I'm, I'm not talking about people who are programmed in a particular way. I'm talking about people who have found something and it is calling them to the point where, I'm not going to say they're obsessed, but they are doing this thing on a regular basis. It's like they just think about it. Okay, That's what it's like when you get a spiritual calling. The thing is, it's all this big to-do about religion and spirituality. You know, we are so set on 
what is right. You know, religion is like this really big thing. And so if you're born into a family that is one religion, no religion, whatever, and you do something different, it's really a calling. I'm not talking about rebelliousness, okay? We all rebel. I'm not talking about all of that, okay? If someone says they're truly called, then that's it. If we're not going to make a big deal about the camping, if we're not going to make a big deal about the dog lover, you know, if your loved one loved dogs, that was their calling, it's not going to be that big of a deal. No one's going to care. Like, oh, yeah, she loves dogs. Or, oh, yeah, he loves the fish. <laughs> no one makes a big deal out of that. It's no different when it comes to spirituality. I, I, my philosophy is many paths, one truth. Religion is not one fit one size fits all and so whatever lessons uh, we all come here to learn it may take a particular spiritual system to get it done and I subscribe to we make a choice to come here into this physical realm and so if I have made this choice more than likely I'm going to say something about how I want to be spiritually Okay, I made this decision before I came. You did too. And that's why I don't trip over people's spirituality. Don't impose it on me. But I don't trip too much. And people change. They evolve. They grow. Because that's what spirituality is. It's very dynamic. Okay, and it's... It's... It, it, it's I mean, it, the way it evolves. I mean, it's like... Infinite number of ways it can do it. It's not going to look the same. Even within one religion, I would venture to say, if you talk to someone who practices Islam, they are all different. Their path in Islam is all different. Hindus, Christians, Buddhists, is evident by having so many different denominations or different paths within one religion. They don't all think alike. Why would we all be the same? Even within the same family. Okay? Within the same cultural context. Within the same ethnic group. Why in the world? We don't even all look alike. How can we all have the same religion? The exact same religion. The exact same expression of the religion. It's, it's just not the way that it is. And I know for a long time, maybe that's the way that it was. I really don't know. But we're not. We're just not. And so, if someone, if you're being called, if your loved one is being called, that's, that's exactly what it is. It's a calling. And, you know, if, if I as a child said, I really feel like I want to be a doctor, no one's fussing at me over that. People are like, go be a doctor. I want to be a teacher. She wants to be a teacher. Oh, this is, so, this is so awesome. And if I just hold true to that, and then I become a teacher, and I'm like this amazing teacher, everyone will say, she said it when she was a girl. That's what she wanted to do. You know? As a child, I knew spiritually I was different. But no one knew how to describe it to me. And so I just had like all these weird thoughts in my mind, but as a, in my mind, but as a child, I heard the call, and but because I was raised up in, a, you know, a family or within a cultural context of this is what we are. We are this one religion. Even though I did see argument between, you know, I was raised up Christian and I was raised up Catholic after going to Baptist church and Methodist church for a little while. And they all talked about each other, you know. That, that no, none of them could believe any of the other ones were right or whatever. Or in some way, the other ones were wrong. But as long as they believe in Jesus, then that was it, you know. So that was the main thing. We'll forgive all of that as long as you believe in Jesus. So um, I just said, well, I want to do the right thing. This is what my parents are saying to me. Um, and when I was... Uh, I was raised, like I said, Catholic starting around 10. I was baptized as an infant as a Catholic. 
And then my mother wasn't Catholic, so we weren't going to Catholic church. We were going to Baptist church. And for a while, she worked on Sunday. She sent us to church with the neighbors who were Methodists. And then my daddy, who was the Catholic but not going to church, not putting you on blast, daddy, but you know it's true. Uh, he was like, oh, my kids are going to go to Catholic church. So we started going to Catholic church. My mom converts, and she becomes, like, radically Catholic <laughs> in a good way. Um... And there were things about the Catholic Church, like I said, you know, we have to set stuff up before we come here. The Catholic Church, first of all, not being one religion, one Christian religion my whole life, that was by design. It kept me from holding on to any one thing too much. Number two, there are certain things within Catholicism that were sort of like a reflection of what was to become for me. So the saints, you know, the Catholics are big into angels too, but the saints, the Catholic saints, um, the spiritual system that I am a part of now, which is out of Africa, uh, Yoruba, Ifa, you know, it has um, forces of nature, divinities. And when Africans were brought over to the New World, the Americas, they hid their religion behind, if they were enslaved by people who were Catholic, they hid their religion behind the Catholic saints. Um, and then like there's this ancestral reverence, the way they say it in Catholic Church. And if y'all hear that truck out there, I'm sorry, I should have closed my window. Ugh. Sorry about that. <coughs> um, in Catholic Church, it's called, um, you don't want your ancestor to be stuck in purgatory. And they have these little candles set up. And uh, you light the candle for your ancestor. And that ancestor for me was my grandfather. He died when I was 11. I was so sad. So that was a way for me to couple. Uh, African spirituality is all about the ancestors. So it was like this little setup. Um, so Catholic Church sort of like held me steady. But... Um, when I was 16, I went through um, uh, what is it, confirmation. And by this time, like I said, my mother was hardcore Catholic. And I told my mom, I don't really know if this is the religion that, that I want to practice my whole life. I don't know. She said, I don't care if you don't know. Guess what? You're going through confirmation. <laughs> so I said, okay. <laughs> So, you know, the, the calling has been there for me for a long time. I went through that confirmation, and all I said to myself was, I don't believe not one word I'm saying. I don't believe not one word I'm saying. I graduated and left the Catholic Church to a certain degree, started going to back, black Baptist church because I love the liveliness of it or whatever. Um, but I always had questions about, what religion did my ancestors have before they were enslaved? And people would say, what difference does it make? And I would say, I don't know. It's just a question I have. I need to know what religion did they have? Because maybe that's my religion, you know? But again, I, it, I just didn't meet people who could tell me until after my mother passed. And that's when I really started saying, you know what? I need to address this voice that's inside of me because what I had at the time and this this is not a slight to anyone but for me what I had at the time in terms of religion it was not easing the pain and I now know really it, it time heals it all you can have a God or not time will heal the pain okay when you have that connection to the greater energy, the greater div divine one being consciousness, it can ease the way. It can. Um, for me, that's called truth. When you know truth, truth will ease the way, but however you want to look at it. But my mother's passing made me not tolerate anything that I didn't want to tolerate anymore because I was just so hurt by her passing. I couldn't tolerate lying to myself. 
anymore. I couldn't tolerate being something that I knew I wasn't just to not be different, just to not let people down, just to, you know, I, 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 I don't, the, the, you know, you want the people around you to accept who and what you are, okay? And so all those years, and my mother died when I was 27, you know, I'm knowing there's something within me. I remember going out, checking out all these books on Islam, because, you know, you hear uh, for a lot of people who are looking back, like, I know I, my people originally come from Africa, and I need to know more of who and what I am. And you hear about Islam being the religion of Africa. Mm, no, not exactly. But that's, that's what I thought for a minute, because that's what people were talking about. And got all these books, and my husband's looking at me like, uh... We just got married as Christians, and why do you have all these books on Islam? So I just took all the books back, whatever. And so, like I said, once my mother passed, I said, I'm, I'm done lying. I'm, I can't lie anymore. I don't know what I'm going to lose. I don't want to lose my husband. I don't want to lose my family. I don't want to lose people caring about me. But... Guess what? I'm dying here. <laughs> I'm losing myself. Going through the motions, doing something that I'm like, mm, this is not me. And just one day I said, I just want to know the truth. But it doesn't have to be what I want it to be that will put me in a place where I'm like, okay, yes, I'm like everyone around me. I want the truth. And I just said my prayer to God, God, just show me the truth. And I just let everything go. And two books showed up. And I looked at these books. And they helped me to realize, <laughs> I don't even know anything about this religion that I've been raised up in, really. I don't know the full truth of it. But I don't need to know the full truth of it. What I know is that I'm looking for the true truth, as my mother would say. I'm just looking for truth. I'm not looking for religion. But it took me a long time before I was able to really understand I don't have any problems with religion. Religion is a good thing. It can be an evil, bad thing. Something that just makes me want to puke at times. And the people who are like this, you know who you are. You know who I'm talking to. And I hope and pray that you walk in peace because we all have our path. So I'm not going to judge you, <laughs> but you're not going to dog the rest of us out. <laughs> you're not going to make everyone in your religion look bad because, you know, your views are peakish to me. Uh, I think I have seen people who are religious just really making a very positive difference in their lives. So I don't bash religion and if you're someone who is seeking to answer the call of your spirituality that's different, I encourage you, don't dislike religion. Alright, now people make religion bad because people forget the truth from what they are and they just do mean things in the name of religion. Okay, so let's just get it straight. You will have way more peace on this path if you do not dislike religion. And you will have more peace on this path the more you understand who you are and what your path is and you live it. See, I don't have time to um, really change anyone to... I don't have time to even get people to understand what I'm doing. If, my thing is if you don't understand it, it's probably not meant for you to understand. <laughs> Just how I feel. If you don't understand what I do, it's not meant for you to understand but this is what I always say. Whatever we're doing, is it growing you? Is it making you happier? Is it bringing more peace in your life? And are you doing good work in the world? So I would say to anyone who is opening, number one, just forget the talk about religion. Now some of it will come from you maybe needing to detox yourself. Because as you begin to open up to the newer version of you, you're comparing what you once believed to what you're now saying. Okay, this is now what I see is truth or what I believe but you just drop it just 
Whatever doesn't work for you within that religion, I don't care how much it's programmed in you to you, you can program it out. We are, computers are based on us. Just upload some new software. You don't see computers sitting around like, what well, my old software said, I should do A. And, but now the new software is saying I should do B. No. The computer just uploads the new software and bam, it's going. That's us. It's based on us. Okay? So, you're going to feel the push, the pull, the tug between the old and the new. And that might cause you to talk about the religion some or whatever. Um, but, it's not that big of a deal. If other people want to be a part of religion, just let it, let it be. Whatever. Respect them. After a while, you'll even begin to see, this is number two, you'll begin to see there's more similarities than differences. And that's one of the things I love about where I am spiritually. My spirituality is not landing me to be religious. I can study whatever I want. And because I can study whatever I want, I get to see everybody's basically saying the same thing. <laughs> you know, like, hey y'all, let's, let's let go of limitations and lack. Let's open ourselves to the abundance of the universe and let's do something good. It, it, all, all of them, the real ones, are, are they're, they're saying that. <laughs> and, you know, where one may call God one name and another name, you know, it's all these different names for God. And, and, and some don't acknowledge that there's a goddess, a great mother, uh, and, and some do. You know, it, it, none of that matters. We're all saying the same thing. That's one thing I love. So after a while, you begin to look for the similarities between all of them, if that even matters to you. Because really what matters is that you allow your own spirituality to emerge within you and you live it. I don't have to tell anyone what my religion is. Number three, don't tell anybody. If you're feeling like folks are going to give you a hard time, it's not their business. That's what one of my friends told me. It's not their business. You don't have to tell anybody. If they ask, you say, do you really want to know? And if I tell you the truth, you can't talk to me about it. You can go talk to the rest of the world. Can't talk to me about it. Or you can just say, you know what? It's none of your business. I'm not talking to you. You do not have to talk about it. Okay? So, that those three right there have been like the big three for me and how to make the break just oh it's like religions are not a big deal it does not matter Wh whatever you were raised up you can just let it go you can just let it go and think something new you do it in every other area of your life why would we not do this in, in spirituality we do it in uh, we think a one day about a particular health topic and then we say you know what not a b and we're not beating ourselves up why can't we do this with spirituality? You know, why can we not allow ourselves to evolve and grow and think and believe something new, something different? You know, it's like, why can't we do that? Why do I have to believe exactly one way my whole life if that's not my calling? I'm not. Okay? So you can, you just let, let it go. And you, if, if you really just don't trip too much about religion, you'll begin to see we're all doing the same thing. Many paths, one truth. Okay? And that it's nobody's business what you're doing. It, now, your partner might have a few issues. And you just have to... You know, if you really want to be with that person, it'll, I, I guess it'll work out if that person really wants to be with you. So, you know, me and my husband, people don't understand how we work. He's a, a pastor in the Christian church, and he believes 100% in Jesus, in the Trinity. He preaches about it. He teaches about it week after week after week. And when I started saying, hey, I'm changing spiritually, I'm not Christian. I'm, I'm just... I, you know, I've initiated into a goddess tradition. I've initiated into an African traditional spiritual system. I, I, I did not know 
really what was going to happen. I just hope for the best. And I'm very fortunate <laughs> that my husband lives his religion out because his thing was, you have not done anything worthy of me divorcing you. And guess what? I love you. And, you know, and nobody better not talk about me. <laughs> he ain't going to have that. No one can talk about me. Not everybody's like this. But, you know, that might would be one relationship that you might would have to negotiate. Some make it, some don't. Um, but it's probably some deeper issues anyway. I don't know. Um, I, I, I like for people's committed relationships to last and make it. Um, and even though there's going to be bumps in the road. But I am one who knows sometimes it's a season. And so you go through one season and it's going to end with the spiritual change. Um, and this is the other thing I would encourage you to do. Number four, do not judge other people who are different from you. Because what ends up happening is we know what it's like to be judged. and so But we find ourselves judging other people. We get hypercritical of them. And so just because I started making the change spiritually, I did not feel like I needed my husband to do anything different. The one thing I wanted was for him to just be like, okay, this is what you're doing. I didn't want him to try to stop me. Um, I, and he doesn't have to like what I do. I just want it to be respected. And so if you are the one that feels like you're growing but your partner is not. Let's say, so for me, my husband is growing and evolving spiritually. And that, to a certain degree, is one of the reasons I think we work because we're both constantly working on ourselves spiritually, but we're not trying to change one or the other. Um, but for some people, they're opening spiritually, but their partner is not yet opening spiritually. Do you, okay? Do not judge your partner. That's not their, that's, your path is yours. It's not theirs. Go find spiritual people to talk to. Find the things in your relationship that matter a lot and that you and your partner see eye to eye on. So like my husband and I, we see eye to eye on the fact that we love each other. We see eye to eye on having good character and doing good things, trying to make a positive difference in our lives. If all we focused on was that we spiritually, our, our spiritual paths look different, then all this other stuff, it wouldn't even matter. And all this other stuff is big. Love, respect, good character, raising children that we both love and care about, you know? And so none of that would matter. We would just lose all of that over this one little thing. No. It's not always going to be the same. You, you, that's one thing I would encourage you to do. Study how back in the day, this just wasn't that big of a deal in some cultures. Maybe not all. just wasn't that big of a deal. Um, I remember watching something like Sesame Street. And the little boy, they went into this little boy's house. The dad was Buddhist and the mom was something different. I can't remember what it was. I don't know if it was Christian or what. But the parents had two different religions. And it was just... No biggie. Um, so that's how it can be in your house. Don't go tossing your mate out the window, out the door, because you're growing and your mate isn't. Um, let's see here. But in the end, my question to you is this. Yeah, I got it from Dr. Phil. You know what you got. How's it working for you? If you aren't growing spiritually because you don't want to offend someone or you're afraid or but you hear that calling, how is that working for you? If it's working for you, keep going. More than likely you're not watching this video for that because it's working for you. You probably are feeling miserable, conflicted. Just let it go. I say be free. Do you. You don't have to tell anyone anything. You don't have to explain anything until you're ready. I will give you this last little bit. 
the longer you walk your spiritual path and you experience the fruits of your true spiritual path, not a religion necessarily, but whatever is within you, which it may be in the form of religion. There's some people out there to the day they die, they will be Buddhist. I don't have a problem with that. That's their true religion. That's what's coming from inside of them. Out. Okay? So whatever is inside of you and is coming out and you're living it, you will grow. You will get better. You'll start noticing that life is falling in place for you. Okay? So you watch the fruits of your labor. It'll make you stick with it. You just keep growing. Keep working it. Don't stop. You keep doing that thing. And what you will do after a while is you get to the point where that's truly, that's you. The old you, wherever it comes from. For me, it was programming. But whatever that old you is, that old spiritual you, it just falls away. Even in Christian church, they talk about the old man dying, the new man rising. Okay? And it just becomes who and what you are. You're not trying to do or be anything. It's just who and what you are. Ask you and you'll tell people, this is where I stand spiritually. And you won't even care because you know what it's doing for you. And that's why I say, if people don't get me, it's not my problem. I, I, I don't like to be talked about. I don't like to be ostracized. And I have been. I don't like it. But guess what? They're not living my life. The day I die, I'm not going to say, Well, I lived my life for other people. And did what they wanted me to do. Mm -mm. When I die, I'm going to say I was true to myself. Even when the world said, What's true to you ain't good. I don't care anymore. And, and it's just because what I'm doing, I'm so much happier. I'm so much more at peace and I'm free. And I'm getting happier, more peaceful, and freer as time passes on. I have not perfected this thing. I don't wear a neon light sign talking about my spirituality. What I do is I live it. I mean, people can make whatever assumptions about me that they want. It doesn't matter. People can put a label and they do put labels on me. And they think I'm whatever religion. I don't care. Uh, I, I just have my own inner spirituality that comes forth. I live it. And that's what matters the most to me. That I'm living it. Okay? And if nobody ever gets down with me, it's okay. It's okay. As long as everybody is getting down with their own spiritual nature. That's really all that matters. And so I just encourage you, if you are wondering, how do you do this? <sighs> I'm going to sound cliche. It's just like what Nike said, just do it. What do you have to lose? You know what you have. How's it working for you? I encourage you to love yourself enough to be authentic and follow your own inner guidance. This is Tyra LaFamey, your goddess guru. He, um, just so grateful that you have taken time to watch this video. I hope that it will assist you. Um, if you are interested in personal divination, uh, spiritual reading, you can look at the link in the about section of this video. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with the videos. I do my best to post videos with wisdom and you know weekly readings to help anyone who happens upon them um, live a happier, more peaceful life. And like I said, step into self-realization. So please feel free to subscribe to my video, uh, my channel to keep up with the other videos that will come. So thank you so much. I wish you a blissful day and peace.